you've got pink colochrome all figured out just from the name, or maybe black or gray colochrome sounds familiar, think again. Today we're going to take a deep look into five types of crime that can wreak havoc on your organization, some in ways you'd never expect. We're going to do a brief review of the different types of crimes with examples so you can be clear on what you're dealing with. Stick around until the end when we'll explain one newish type of fraud and also what you should be doing to protect yourself and your organization against these devious criminals. So as I've said, we've got five types of crime. Let's see how many you can identify correctly. You might keep track on an envelope on the side of your desk. Let's start with one you're probably most familiar with, white collar crime. But don't get too comfortable because as we move through the next few, things are going to get a lot more interesting and probably in ways you don't expect. What is white collar crime? White collar crime is a term used for financially motivated, nonviolent crimes typically committed within a business or commercial environment. The most common types of white collar crime of fraud, embezzlement, and insider trading. Basically, these are crimes that involve financial gain that were perpetrated through some form of deception. Possible misconception. Misconception is, is that white collar crime is a crime committed by white collar employees. Wrong. It may be, but that's not what makes it a white collar crime. Some other important facts. Number one, the words financial gain mean that the crime involved anything of value. So it is not necessarily does not necessarily mean the thief stole money, although that's certainly one type. They could have stolen data, which they then sold or used for other reasons, like the theft of confidential intellectual property. Number two, with white collar crime, the thief can be an employee, but in many cases, they're not. And number three, think of those email scams you get asking for an update of a bank account details or that sudden rush wire transfer request from the CFO. Do these sound familiar? These are just a few of the types of white collar crimes lurking in your inbox and ones that could end up, if you make a slip up, costing your company thousands, if not millions of dollars. Creation of phony checks also might fall into this category. As you'll just see when we discuss some of the other types, some of the frauds can end up with more than one type of collar, more than one color collar. Now, here's one that might surprise you, especially when it comes to who's committing it. Let's talk about pink collar crime and why it's overlooked and why you may not have the correct perception about it. So what is pink collar crime? Pink collar crime specifically refers to embezzlement. This is the theft or misappropriation of funds belonging to one's employee. It is the one type of fraud, by the way, that is more likely to be committed by a woman than a man. Why? Because bookkeepers and other lower level employees with access to your funds are more likely to be female and their bosses never see to realize the fact that these individuals have both the means, which by, in this case means the knowledge, and the opportunity to defraud the organization. Many of these frauds go on for many, many years because no one can comprehend that sweet, quiet Edith is actually much smarter than anyone gives her credit for. Possible misconception, you probably got it by this time. This crime is, mo is committed by women only. Wrong. That is not the case. While mo more embezzlements are perpetrated by women than men, the term pink collar refers to the crime, not the perpetrator. Men also embezzle, as I'm sure you're aware, and hence commit pink collar crimes as well. Some other um, important details. The term refers to employees only, but remember, the employees committing this crime can be of any gender. Number two, this is where weak controls can cost a company in a big way. Most internal controls are committed by long-term trusted employees who turn out to be anything but trusted. They may be long-term, but they're not trusted. So this is why I always make such a big deal about internal controls across the board, no exception. Um, number three, some real life examples um, experienced in accounting, accounts payable, purchasing, finance, etc include the manipulation of the master vendor file, um, usually to cover up an embezzlement, uh, the creation of phony journal entries, also to cover up 
uh, embezzlement or some other financial crime, theft of payments meant for the company, and submission of phony invoices for, for payments. These aren't the only types, but there are some of the types that we're more familiar with. Now, what is black collar crime? Sounds ominous, doesn't it? Black collar crime is the unofficial term for crimes committed by people in positions of authority or respect who abuse that power or trust. It is often used to describe crimes committed by the clergy, but can also be used for crimes committed by other respected professionals, such as teachers and medical professionals. A possible misconception that the term refers to the color of one's skin. That is wrong. And hopefully you got that one wrong. Some other, a uh, few other details about this. Um, I guess you could say that the term refers to, could refer to top level employees who defraud or mislead their organization for personal gain. How it's really used in the business world as there are so many other terms available to describe their financial misbehavior. And now let's talk about the type of crime I hope you never encounter. What is red collar crime? If you think that fraud stops at the theft at the theft itself think again sometimes criminals will go to deadly length to cover their track and that's when red collar crime comes into play and it can be quite dangerous red collar crime involves physical violence to facilitate a financial crime um, a common example kidnapping in, is considered a red collar crime now uh, if you, possible misconception or not if you thought red collar crime was associated with violence you were 100 percent correct if you like me though I had to look up the term the first time I heard it because I really did not know what it meant and as I said hopefully you'll never encounter this. Now before we get to the horror that many of us do have to deal with if this video has made you rethink the risks your organization faces don't keep it to yourself give us a thumbs up and share it with your team and your colleagues to help them stay one step ahead on fraud. Now we're going to take a look at something that did not exist 20 years ago. What is gray collar crime? Gray collar crime is a type of crime that can be committed behind a computer without the offender ever seeing or having to interact with their victims or their targets I should say targets and victims. Sadly most listening to this will have been targeted by this type of crime and many of you will have been targeted multiple times. Possible misconception it's a crime committed by older folks. If you thought that you were wrong again although it is possible crime is committed by older folks but the gray refers to use of, of a computer in a separate location. Some other details. Um, one, sadly there are many variations of this type of fraud or scam as, as I said you're painfully aware and two and I can't stress this strongly enough you need to continually be on the lookout for this type of fraud. It often you know weaves its way into your inbox um, looking innocent and when it's anything but. You need to be watchful for all types of fraud, but there have been so many new variations on gray collar frauds, gray collar crimes that would make your head spin. Some real life examples, which many of you will have encountered in your accounting, accounts payable, purchasing finance careers, include phony email requests for change of bank account information, CEO or CFO or other high level executive impersonation, emails requesting a rush wire transfer or confidential employee information information, uh, phony creation of ACH debits, etc. This is part of the reason, as I said, we make such a big deal about daily bank wrecks and verifying and like I like to say, be suspicious. Um, it should be noted that I think we also have what I would, what I call multicolor collar crime. Um, it can be a mix of any of the, the crimes that we've been discussing above, as you probably realize. Sadly, some crimes wear multiple colored collars as they fall into more than one category. You probably also notice that many of these crimes hit directly at our everyday processes and accounts payable where even one slight oversight can permit a fraud to take place. That's why we recently did a talk on eight such issues, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck and stay safe.